All right, uh, welcome to the shop. I have an update on my use of the new Tandem X20S. Uh, so there has been an update to the firmware. We're at 1.5.9 now, and I am able to use the pressure sensor as a failsafe. So quick rundown on how to get this set up and shouldn't take too terribly long. It's pretty straightforward using a special function. So let me first explain the setup. I've got the model on, powered on, connected to the radio. I'm just using a receiver battery right now since I don't have the wings attached. Uh, I've got my air pump set up here uh, to, the, to the front nozzle and it's just, you know, pump it up like this with the switch. So we're completely drained. The system is completely drained of any air pressure. So one thing to note is you are measuring atmospheric pressure, okay? Atmospheric pressure is somewhere around 14.2 four to 14.7 PSI depends on your altitude. So that is normal, okay? That's, you know, one bar, one atmosphere, 14 point-ish PSI, we're good. So uh, what we have is the, the pressure sensor is in line and this is sending telemetry through the uh, smart port, okay? And then that sends back to here and you set that up like you would any other telemetry sensor in the manu manual. Okay, that's that's the easy part. So what we're going to do is we're going to go here into uh, uh, logic switches, and I've set up this logic switch. So this first one is for my timer because I use a timer based off of my throttle position and uh, the throttle cut. So this gear failsafe gear FS. We're going to edit. And so we're doing A is greater than X. At first I was thinking A less than, but I want greater than. Um, so we're gonna use the source of pressure. We set it to 60 PSI, 65 PSI. So one thing to note here is this is originally, so the units by default in the, the radio are in Pascals, which is really, really tiny. So just for an example, I'm gonna use my wheel to scroll up because you can't use these buttons uh, right now in the in the firmware, but you can use the scroll wheel. And so listen to the beeps that correspond to PSI as it goes up. See? And that's me really scrolling. All right. So all of that scrolling and I'm you really got to work for it. I think I was scrolling to get to 65. I was scrolling for like five minutes. It's kind of nuts. So we're going to go back down to 64.9. Go back up there. Okay. Ugh, it's a lot of beeping. So that makes sense. Uh, so then we're going to have the active condition based off of your, whatever your uh, uh, landing gear operation is. And in this case, uh, it's landing gear up. So gear up position is uh, SG down arrow. So the switch is pulled forward. All right, and then um, no delay, no confirmation or anything like that. Uh, there's no comment or anything. Um, just leave it normal, okay? You don't need to invert anything. And then we're gonna go back into our mix, into our landing gear. So our landing gear, now we're gonna edit this. And so the gear, rather than active condition being always, we're gonna set it to that logic switch, the gear fail safe, all right? So now we have the input as the, the, the SG, my landing gear switch, just like you would set it up for landing gear any other way. Your output is your gear channel. So we're all set there. So let's go back. So right now I have gear up, gear down, gear up. The, uh, the servo does nothing for my air valve, okay? So we're gonna go pressure this up with the switch to gear down.
All right, so we're at 75, so we can play with this. Gear up, gear down, gear up, gear down. Yeah, see, the pressure was dropping already because this particular setup where we've got this plug, it drains really fast. Um, so let's power it up again. I'll put the gear up, and then you can see 50, 55, 60, 65, see? And then when the, it drains down, it goes back by default to the gear down position. All right? So that is kind of a lifesaver. So if there is an air leak in flight, um, then always the gear is going to want to drop down. And so it's up to you to adjust your uh, your your uh, Robart valve or whatever valve, if you have a, a retard for the uh, dropping of the gear or going up or whatever, you, you kind of want to make sure that the drop is kind of sudden. Uh, ge just a general good practice for pneumatics, you kind of want them to slam down anyway, uh, just a bit, because uh, that way you make sure they get down and locked. I've seen far too many pilots make that mistake where they want them scaled to come down but they don't get locked all the way. So when they land, the gear buckles. Just saying, little bit of sacrifice of scale to make sure that your model is not gonna go on the runway, all right? So uh, that being said, I'm gonna demonstrate this one more time for you guys. We're gonna get the camera turned around here. And so we're gonna put this again, the gear up position. 30. 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 75, going down, leaking, leaking, 70, 69, 68, 67, 66, 65, now. All right, so drops down the gear. While the leak is still going, we've got enough air. And so we know we need to land because we have an auto gear down position. Now you can obviously use the same thing uh, to set up uh, an audio thing to just say emergency landing or things like that. So we should be all set to go. It's literally little things like this that give me confidence in this radio system because like a feature like that is just insurance. Okay. It's insurance to make sure I'm going to get my model back. <laughs> you know, this is a nice model. I want to keep it, uh, sell it if I can. Uh, but still it's a, uh, it's an, it's a nice feature to have and not to mention it gives me telemetry. So if the system is developing leaks over time, I can trend that data by looking into the telemetry logs. Just saying. Uh, data is powerful. So if you have it, you are empowered. If you don't have it, you don't have the power. So uh, thanks for tuning in. Hope you found this helpful and uh, keep working on your flying works of art.